What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to write data straight from your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W to your local computer. And this has really powerful use cases for when you want to write large swaths of data to a device, because that is, we are really limited in the amount of storage we have on our Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, and we can only write so much data, sensor data that is for our applications, and eventually we will run out of storage to save that important CSV information or any information you have on the device. So by the end of this video, you will be able to transfer data from your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W to your local computer in real time. As you could see with the simple example I have here, this is data I wrote from my Raspberry Pi Pico W straight to my computer without even having to save onto my Raspberry Pi Pico W, which is pretty cool. So by the end of it, you will have a foundation to do this and have an example to get started yourself. So enough being said, let's jump into it to what we need for the setup and I will show you how to do this. Okay, so the first step today is I'm using a Mac and I'm in the terminal app. And at a high level, what we're trying to do to transfer files between the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico W in my case, to the local computer, my Mac, is we want to establish a serial communication between the two to start doing this to be able to write information from the Pico W to my computer. So in order to do that, we're actually gonna run a program on our Mac that allows us to do that in Python. And the first thing you want to do is simply pip install a package called Pi Serial. So you could just do pip install minus pip3 and we could just do pi serial that's the first step you want to do so you do have to have python on your local computer to do this that is a prerequisite but i would imagine if you are have been programming this is ready on your computer but installing python is beyond the scope of this video just know once you have python you have to pip install the pi serial package so i'm just going to click enter there and i already installed it and that's for the first step okay so the next thing you want to do after pip installing the pi serial package is you simply want to create a python script somewhere on your computer i just created it on my desktop here and i called it connect to pico.py this is the Python script we'll be running on our local end to be waiting for the serial data from our Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. So I have that script and I just have it open in VS Code. You can use any editor you want really. And it's actually a really simple script. So we just import the serial package, which we just uh, pip installed. We configure the serial connection with just three lines here. We set the port. So this port is important because it is the 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 path essentially to your raspberry pi pico and how i got that port is i went to my thani ide and you can actually get it really easily in thani so if i just go to thani i can show you thani knows exactly where the device is and on the bottom right there is just so shows dev slash cu dot usb modem 1101 so yours is probably different than that so just go check that and then just copy that in there for the port and then once you have the port going back to the code baud rate this is the baud rate we want the default baud rate for the raspberry pi pico and we create the serial connection there and we have this open a file on your computer to write the received data so this is just the file path on our computer the full path where we want to write the data from our raspberry pi pico so we can just really save that wherever it's on my desktop so if we go back here and i minimize this we can actually see that the file is also there on my desktop so you can just call it whatever you want for your purposes and then going back to this code once again what we do is forever in a while loop while true, we have this data. So data equals serial connection dot read. So it's waiting to get at least 128 bytes from the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And once it has 128 bytes, what it's going to do is it's going to check if the data is equal to uh, EOF. And if it is break, we're not really using the condition for the sake of this video, but you can add a break condition to eventually break out of the while loop if you like. And then we just print the data locally to show that it's working. So this is just for our debugging purposes. And then we write the data to the file that we set here. And then if we broke out of the loop, we simply close the destination file and we close the serial connection. So that's literally all you have to do for the local end. So it's a really simple script. I'll link that in the description down below. And you can really customize this as you want and get creative. But this is a, a really basic way to initiate serial communication with the Raspberry Pi Pico W on your computer. Now that you have this locally, we are not going to run it yet. I'm going to show you what we're going to do on the Raspberry Pi Pico W end. But so let's jump into that and we'll get back to this in a second. Okay, so jumping into the Raspberry Pi side of things, I'm using Thani to edit my code. Really, you can use any editor you want, um, VS Code, PyCharm, but I think Thani is the best for this case scenario. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna hop in Thani and we're gonna select our device from the bottom right there, which I already did. And we're just going to go to the main.py file. If you don't have one, create a main.py file. And the reason we're doing the main.py file specifically, some people don't know this, is because as soon as the Raspberry Pi Pico is plugged into any power source, it actually tries to execute the main.py file. And the reason we want to do 
execution upon plugging in the device is because we can't go back and actually run this code at the same time our local computer is trying to connect to the serial port because Thani itself is trying to connect to the same serial port our local computer is trying to connect to and we'll get an error. So what we want to do in the end of this is we want to create something in the main.py file and we're gonna unplug and replug the device once it's ready. And that way we'll only have one serial communication at a time between our local computer and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Okay, so that's what we're doing at a high level. It has to be in the main.py file for this example, for this to work. So what we have in this main.py file is we have some simple imports from machine to interact with some of the hardware, I squared C pin to do um, some I squared C communication, obviously, and time to manage some time. We're just doing time.sleep to make the, the loop less uh, uh, more in frequency. And then we have import UOS, which is for us to allow uh, interaction with the operating system of the Raspberry Pi Pico. And then what we're going to do is import BME280. This is just a library I have for my BME280. I would imagine most of the people watching this video aren't using a BME280, so if you're not, you don't have to worry about this. You can use any sensor you want, any form of data you want. I'm just using the BME280 because it's a popular sensor I like to use. And I'll link that down in the description below if you're interested in a sensor like that, but it does provide temperature, humidity, and pressure data. So once we have those imports, what we want to do is we want to create a UART object. Now UART is something I'm fairly new to, and what UART stands for is actually Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, and it essentially allows us to transmit and receive data in serial format, okay? So that's why we're using UARTs. Now we did configure some UART settings here because I had issues sending data to my local computer and reading data from my BME280 at the same time. So just know that these three lines of code, or these two lines here, actually allow me to read data from my BME280 and send data to my local computer at the same time. Without this, I wasn't able to do that. I was actually running into issues. So if you are using a sensor, you probably have to put these two lines of code here to make sure you can read the sensor data and send it to your local computer with one script. Next, what I have here is I'm just creating the BME280 object with my I squared C, I squared C object, and I'm creating it with the BME library. Simple as that. Once again, if you're not using the BME280 library, you do not have to worry about this. And finally, what we're doing here is we're just reading the data from the sensor. So temperature, pressure, and humidity, and we're printing it. So when we actually print in this case, we're actually printing it to the, the file that we opened on our local computer. So it knows based on the serial communication that it's going to print to that file. So printing here is not printing on the screen, it's actually printing to the file on our local Mac. So that's pretty cool. So that's all we have to do to write that to our Mac and it's going to separate it by a new line automatically. And we're just gonna do that once, like I said, every second. And finally, I don't know, I don't think I need this code anymore, that's from before. And because this is a continuous while loop, we actually will never reach this line of code so we could just remove that. But ideally you would want some exit condition. This is just at a high level what you do. And that's really all it is for the Raspberry Pi Pico side. So right now we're serially connected from Thani to the Raspberry Pi Pico, so this won't work right now. So what we have to do is, now that it's saved to our main.py file, I can simply unplug and unplug my Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W. So I have it right here, so I'm just gonna unplug and plug it, it's fine. And what's gonna happen is, as soon as I replug it, it's gonna start reading sensor data and it's gonna try to write it to a serial, or it's gonna try to print it to that serial uh, to that port or to that, to that channel. So it's trying to do that right now, but I haven't run the script on my local machine. So what's probably happening right now is trying to print somewhere it can't find it, and it keeps executing this loop. So it's executing that main.py file. So let's go back to our terminal here and run the file we have on our local computer. So if you want to do that, you can just go to your terminal and type Python, the name of the file. So I'm just gonna type enter there. So now I'll give it a few seconds because it's waiting for 128 bytes of data before it does anything. So you can see now that every time it retrieves 128 bytes of data from the sensor, it's printing on the screen and it's saving to the file. So we'll just let it run for a bit. And like I said, I don't have any specified exit condition. It is not the best code, but I'm just showing you how to get a skeleton of this for your own purposes. And hopefully after watching this video, you will have the means to create some nice exit conditions and do some other fancy things with this serial communication. So what's happening is right now, the Raspberry Pi Pico is getting data from the BME280 sensor, and now that it finds a file to print to, it's actually printing to the file we have on our local computer. And that's pretty much it. So you can print any sensor data you want. You can transfer whole files over. There's many ways you can go about this. So if I go ahead and exit this code right now, I'm just gonna hit 
uh, control C on my computer to exit it, to force exit on my local computer, we're gonna see that all of this, all of these bytes are actually saved in that file I defined on my desktop, which is pretty cool. So I'll let it write one more there and we'll exit it. Okay, so just control C and probably a similar command on Windows. Let's go back and open that store info.txt. We could see it wrote a bunch of lines of data. So that's exactly what we expected. So that pretty much concludes it for this video. We wrote two scripts, one on our local computer and one on our Raspberry Pi. Pico W that allows us to transfer instantly data from our device to our local computer, which has many powerful use cases, especially as I mentioned at the beginning of the video for sending large amounts of data. And people who are using sensors probably are recording data every you know, milliseconds and eventually their device will run out of storage. So this is a great way to, uh, for sensor applications to save data that you want to look at later on. And I would imagine it has many other powerful use cases. So I know it's a lot, serial communication can be kind of intimidating at first, but I hope you learn how to do this at a high level. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be willing to help you with any complications you have regarding this. I know we went over a lot in a short amount of time. So let me know about that. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe because I think this is really useful content. In fact, I was trying to do this for one of my applications and because it took me some time, I thought I would show the internet. So I hope it helped someone out there. And if it did, be sure to subscribe. That would mean a lot to supporting a uh, Shilla Tech content. And stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.